Welcome back to No BS TS Series 2, Episode 3, where we talk about the visitor and iterator patterns from the original Gang of Four design patterns book, because they're honestly really closely related, so we might as well do both in one video. But of course, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about my No BS TS The Book, which has just come out and covers every single video from all of Series 1, where we go from all the basics of TypeScript all the way through to React and Node CLI stuff, and then all of series two, and every time a new video comes out, a new version of the book comes out. It's really good, it's really exciting stuff. So without further ado, let's go check out the visitor and iterator patterns. So as with all of the videos in series two, we start off by looking at the architecture. And the visitor pattern architecture is actually really simple. You have a visitor engine that your code creates and instantiates, and then you give it a visitor. And in this case, our visitor engine is going to go off and make a whole bunch of HTTP requests for us, basically using a paged API, which are always pains in the butt. And we are going to be the visitor. So we give it a function and it gives us back the data as it sees it. It's a really nice way to separate the mechanics of going through a paged API from the mechanics of what you want to do with the data that's in those paged APIs. Now the iterator pattern is basically the same thing, just inverted. So you've got our code that is essentially getting an iterator that is again making those HTTP requests and it's the one kind of driving it saying, okay, give me some more data, give me some more data, give me some more data. And that's how the iterator pattern works. So we're gonna start off with the visitor pattern and it's gonna make a whole bunch of API requests for us. And the API that we're gonna call is this Pokemon API. It basically gives us back a list of all of the Pokemon that are available. There is 1,118 of them and you get them in sets of 10. So the next 10 in this case is on this URL and you can kind of page through it that way. So you just follow next until next runs out and you'll eventually get all of the data. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you don't want to return all 1,118 in a single go. So, all right, let's go and create our visitor. So I'm going to create a new directory called visitor. And into that directory, I'm going to go and create our little project. I'm gonna initialize it. And then I'm going to add TypeScript, TS node in development mode. And then I'm gonna add node fetch, but I'm gonna get the 2.0 version of it since the 3.0 version of it is now in ESM. And then I'm gonna add the types for the 2.0 version. Okay, so it looks good to go. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna create a new file called visitor with class. And I'm gonna import fetch from node fetch. And I'm gonna create a class called visit all pages. And I'm gonna create a constructor that has the base URL, which would be in our case, the beginning URL of that Pokemon list. And then I'm gonna have an asynchronous method called visit, which is going to get called back every time we have some data. So how do we wanna define visitor? Well, it's gonna be a function, and that function is gonna take some data that it gets back from the API. So let's make this a generic class. We'll start off by calling that data type. And we'll say that this visitor is going to be a function that takes some results, which are a set of data type, and return a void. So we need to track that next URL. So we're gonna go and create a new local called next URL that tracks that. And start it off with the base URL. And then we're gonna use do while. So we're gonna say while there is a next URL, we wanna to continue to loop around here. So it looks like GitHub Copilot's got a good suggestion for us here. I'm just gonna take that and we'll walk through it. So we're gonna get the response back by awaiting the fetch of that URL. And then we're gonna get the JSON back. And we are going to then call that visitor with those results. And then we're gonna set the next URL to what we get back for next. But of course this is untyped and we want that data type to come back and all the way through. So let's go and add some typing here. So the first thing we need to do is type next, which is gonna be an optional string. And then we have the results, which is an array of that data type. So the first thing we need to do is define the data type we're gonna get back. So in this case, it's a Pokemon. 
And this Pokemon, let's see, it has a name and a URL. So name, URL, cool. And now I want to go create our visitor. And give it our URL, which is the starting point. And then I want to call visit and give it some function back. So let's do results. And then I'm going to console.log those results. Okay, let's see how we go. I'm gonna run TS node with that visitor with class. Uh, it's telling us that our undefined, so this next is coming back and it could be undefined. So we need to define that this is either gonna be a string or it's gonna be undefined. Now let's see how we do. Huh, all right, we're getting data. Okay, that's great. So what we've done is we've separated out the traversal of all of the paged API surface from the code that actually is going to interpret those results. Of course, in this case, all we're doing is putting out the results to console log, but still you've done a nice separation of concerns between these two mechanics, which is great. So let's go try this again with a function. I'm gonna create a new file in here, call it visitor with function. Paste this in, and we're just gonna start converting this over to a function. So it's gonna be a, an async function And we'll give it that base URL. Doesn't need to be private or anything like that. And we need to make it generic. So I'm gonna put in there that data type. All right, now we gotta look to see if there's any this in here. So there's one, there's this base URL here, which is the starting point. Otherwise it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna jump down here now and alter this to be visit and give it that URL. And I can even give it our data type, which is a Pokemon array. And I think we're ready to go. Let's bring up the terminal and then run that function variant. And there you go. Freely flowing data. And again, a very nice decoupling of the concerns between traversing the API and actually processing those results. Okay, so that was a very simple version of the visitor pattern. Let's talk about the iterator pattern. So that's gonna be essentially the inversion of that. Our code is gonna be the one that instantiates an iterator, but it's gonna be the one that drives the getting of the data as opposed to in the visitor case where the visitor was the one that was constantly chewing through the data and calling us back. So let's go bring back our project and I'm gonna create a new directory called iterator. And we'll go set that up. First we'll do yarn init, and then we will add a TypeScript, and then we'll add node fetch, and then we'll add the types for node fetch, and it looks like we're good to go. So I'm gonna create a new file in here, we'll call it index.ts. So in this case, I'm not gonna do the class variant and the function variant. Instead, I'm gonna actually write I think the way that it should be written in JavaScript, which is to use JavaScript generators, which is something that not many people know about, but are a fantastic feature of JavaScript. So let's jump right in and bring in, of course, fetch. So I'm gonna create an asynchronous generator function. And the way that I create a generator is I put star after the function and we'll call it iterate results. And again, we'll give it a data type. And then we'll take a base URL to start us off. And at this point, I'm actually gonna copy in some of the code that we had from the visitor with function pattern, because it's actually very similar. So we're gonna start off with that URL as the next URL. We're gonna do everything we did before, which is basically just get do the fetch, get the response back. But of course, we don't have a visitor here. So how do we get the data back? Well, the way that a generator works is it yields results back to the caller, in this case, a for loop. So every time it yields, it yields additional items to that for loop. So we're gonna do yield here and just yield back that array of results. Now we need to call this thing. So I'm gonna go create an asynchronous function down here and call it because we don't have top level await in JavaScript quite yet. And then I'm gonna use a for await syntax, which you might not have ever seen before.
and we'll just console log out those results. And so I need to give it that base URL. So let's go back over here to our function and just copy that. Paste it in there and let's see how we do. So I'm going to run MPX TS node on that index.ts file. Wow, that was really cool. And how clean is that, right? Let's go back and look at the implementation here. So all I need to do is just yield whatever results I want back. And this for loop just picks it up as if it's just some sort of array. It's fantastic. The only difference being the await here. But what if I actually wanted to go and get each result individually? Well, what I can do here is actually use yield star, and that's gonna give us back every one of the results as we go. So let's try it again. So now we can see that we're getting individual results every time we go back through this loop. So if I say, for example, if results.name equals Pikachu, then break. And of course we have to give it a interface here. So pop that down there and say that we're iterating over a list of Pokemon. And let's try this again. Now when it gets to Pikachu, it breaks. We are controlling how far that iterator goes. And that's really the big difference between the visitor pattern and the iterator pattern, right? In the visitor pattern, you'd have to return some essentially, oh, I'm done, I'm, please break now. Whereas in the iterator pattern, because we are controlling that iterative cycle, then we get to say break and break out just the way we normally would through any for loop. This is really cool. Actually, if you haven't used generators in JavaScript, they are really cool. I kind of underestimated them in the past personally, and I think you should check them out if you haven't checked them out already. So yeah, at this point, all we're doing is we're saying, if we get the name back of Pikachu, then we break out. And the great thing that's happening here is we actually won't get any more pages from the server once we've found the one that we want. It's not gonna keep on generating even though we don't want it to. No, 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 it's actually going to stop when we say to stop using break, which is what we normally do out of a for loop. Really cool stuff. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a lot more about the visitor and the iterator pattern and how they are implemented in both JavaScript and TypeScript and maybe about JavaScript generators, which are a really cool feature that I think people have overlooked for a long time. But I wanna hear from you in the comments about how you've used these patterns. And of course, if you like this video, just hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out. Back from vacation and doing more blue collar coder videos. Yeah.